Welcome to What is Going Om for new thought from the edge of Om. Each week on Om Time's flagship radio show, veteran broadcaster, author, and media consultant Sandy Sedgbeer conducts thought provoking interviews with inspirational authors, artists, musicians, scientists, speakers, and filmmakers who are working at the point where spirituality and science meet consciousness at the very edge of Om. Here is your host, Sandy Sedgbeer. Hello, I'm a pioneering integrative health practitioner, Dr. Richard Gold, met world-renowned composer and performer, Yuval Ron, while teaching... ...would result in profound collaborations for healing and well-being for the rest of us via the power of music, sound, and sacred chants. Yuval Ron is a world-renowned musician, composer, producer, educator, and peace activist who composed music for the Oscar-winning film West Bank Story, has performed for the Dalai Lama, and has collaborated with Sufi leaders, Zen Buddhists, visual artists, and been on his book, Divine Attunement, Music as a Path to Wisdom, won a gold medal award for Best Spirituality Book at the Indie Book Awards 2015. His collaborator, Dr. Richard Gold, is a licensed acupuncturist and holds a doctorate in psychology. One of the founders of the Pacific College of Oriental Medicine, he spent the last four decades pursuing mental mindfulness and meditation. Understanding. Am I? Um, I. My uh, connection I hear seems that, to be fine. Uh, I hear the same thing, Chris. I hear Sandy breaking in and out. Okay, I out. am going to. I'm going to call back into the studio. I'm on my telephone, and I've not had any problems with it so far. I'll call back. How do you want to do it? Do you want to start again, Chris? Okay, well, let's... <laughs> okay. All right, well, I'm going to leave it there with the introduction and just bring our guest straight on. You, Val Ran, Ron, Dr. Richard Gold, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andy. And I'm sorry about the uh, problems with the connection here, but hopefully it will smooth itself out now. Now, your company, Meta Mindfulness Music, has released six new sound remedies for healing and well-being as part of the new Meta Music Medicine series that you've produced based on the wisdom of traditional Chinese medicine, five element theory, and recent advances in modern neuroscience. Before we talk about the healing power of music, I'd like to know a little bit about how your individual journeys converged to create this collaboration. Okay, you want to go first, Yuval, or should I? Uh, go for it. Yuval, why don't you go first? Okay. okay. Um, uh, we were both teaching in Esalen Institute in Big Sur, California, uh, several years ago, about five years ago. And I've heard from uh, one of my friends about uh, Dr. Gold. Uh, I was told that he's a, an amazing healer, that he teaches there, and that I should uh, try to meet him. So I knew that he's on campus, but I, I was teaching the whole week, and I didn't have any chance to, to even see him uh, uh, during that week, I bumped into his wife, actually, uh, and, uh, and, and that's it, you know, and, and I left. At the end of the week, I left Esalen, and I felt a little bit disappointed that I didn't get to meet Richard Gold. And uh, I was driving down the coast with my wife and my two children, and uh, we got hungry on the way back, and, and, and after three hours of driving, we decided to stop at Morro Bay, which is on the coast of California, to have dinner. It was dinner time, and we, we, we didn't know Morro Bay. We'd never been there. Nobody recommended any restaurant for us. We just stopped at the bay, and we walked to the first restaurant that we saw. And as soon as we entered the restaurant, guess who we see sitting at the table having dinner? 
Dr. Richard Gold, his, his wife, and his two children. And it was a miraculous moment. Um, it, it was as if we, we received a second chance, you know, and we had a quiet, isolated spot to have dinner with our families together, and we formed a friendship from, from that moment on. And, and then Dr. Gold told me about his interest in using sound uh, for medicine, and uh, he commissioned uh, music that uh, I, I went on to compose to use sound as a medicine, and and that's how we um, that's how this whole journey began for us. Quite so, miraculous. I mean, this, you weren't new to the subject of uh, sound and uh, how it affects the uh, the brain, neuroscience, music, chanting, and spiritual work. Richard, right. tell us, you know, you tell us why you chose to incorporate traditional Chinese medicine into these recordings. Okay. Well, well that, that um, is I, I the specialty of Dr. Gold, yeah. So, um, so when I was teaching at Esalen, Yuval was actually teaching a, a course in sound and neuroscience in the brain. And I was teaching a, a course in uh, mindfulness through the use of traditional Thai medical massage, which is a subspecialty of mine. And throughout my career as a clinician of Chinese medicine, which is about four, 40 years now, and when I teach body work, I've always used music to help facilitate the, the learning process, the meditative quality, the healing process of the, of, of the environment. Um, and so when I met Yuval, um, it, it, it developed a little more organically. It wasn't quite that the friendship developed right away, but the, the conferencing and the discussing took a little while. So for many years that I've been using sound um, but quite frankly, as someone, as someone who really enjoys sophisticated sound, I would use the word, rather than just the generated sound by computers, although some of it is, is certainly adequate, I become a, a little bit um, disappointed in, this, in the sounds that are available to, to use in, in clinical environments. Um, and so uh, it didn't have the right vibrational, it, wasn't, it didn't have musicality, and it didn't support uh, fully what I was seeking to do. So um, when I met Yuval and, and his, and I happened to love his his basic music that he does with his ensemble and his uh, musical scores, I thought, oh wow, this is a chance to bring my interest, which is in the use of sound to facilitate healing, and to incorporate uh, the wisdom of Chinese medicine. That's what I want to mention now. So in the traditional Chinese medicine, we have an original book that's still used for teaching called the Neijing, the Yellow Emperor's Classic of Internal Medicine. And in that book, which dates from about 250 BC, and again, is still actively utilized, there is specific indications that each of the five elements has a tonal a structure associated with it. So just like an acupuncture point will affect the, the earth element and another point in our, or herbals or foods will affect uh, the spleen or the stomach or the liver or the heart, the same is true of sound. And again, that's embedded in this, which I would call it a sacred text. It's a medical text more than metaphysical, but it's a sacred text. And it's highly, uh, in, uh, highly loved in our profession. So I presented to Yuval this ancient wisdom but we wanted to create something that was layered, that was, was complex, and we only wanted to use acoustic musicians playing our basic themes. So Yuval's uh, skills as a composer and his musicality and his understanding of neuroscience, he's one of the leading people in, in the use of sound and neuroscience for many years. We came together to create this uh, ancient wisdom and modern sound so that a modern listener could uh, really enjoy the music, whether they have under any understanding of Chinese medicine, or even in some situations, any interest in meditation or even consciousness, uh, that the music itself would be lovely to listen to. But in the construction of the music and the layering that we did, we can discuss in a little bit, um, we were able to present something that, that can create a measurable uh, outcome. Well, before we discuss the layering of the music, Perhaps you value could tell us how does sound impact the body? Well, we have um, numerous studies showing that uh, sound affects the brain. The, there's enormous uh, area. I mean, uh, actually, the, 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 what is fasc most fascinating is that from all the studies that I've looked at, 
sound make more areas in the brain respond than any other activity, sound. And that's why so many neuroscientists are now interested in music, not because they are necessarily musicians who are curious also to know what, what music does to the brain. It's just that when they subject people to music, they get a lot of data coming out of many different areas of the brain. So uh, s sound causes the brain to process numbers because music is math has mathematical relationships. So not just the oral areas in the brain are are lighting up when we hear music, but also motoric. We respond in a motoric way. Uh, we have personal information and memories that are being triggered by sound. So a whole lot of things going on, even a release of hormones and chemicals in the brain are caused by uh, sound. So first of all, then the mind, as we know, is connected to the body. So when you affect the brain of a person so dramatically and so drastically, uh, there are impact on the body. So for example, if you were to play slow pulsing music that causes relaxation in the brain, immediately there's a slowing down of the breath, there's lower blood pressure, the, the body starts relaxing. So it's a mind-body connection. Uh, if we look just at the body, we see that sound enters the body not just through the ears, but through the tissues and the bones. So our body hears music and vibrates to music beyond just the sense of hearing. Uh, that's why uh, in, in, Israel, in Israel, for example, there's a, a dance company that all the dancers are deaf. None of them can hear music. And they are a professional dance troupe that performs around the world. They're called uh, Kol Vidmama, which means uh, sound and silence. This dance company relies on the fact that the, the dancers feel the vibrations of the music through their feet, and they dance to the music based on those vibrations. So sound vibrates every piece of our being, mind and body. So it's a very powerful tool for healing. The layering that you refer to, I mean, it's incredibly complex, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, Tell very, com it. very complex, very, very complex. But we, because we, because we chose it to be com we chose it to do that way. We, we chose <laughs> so to tell do us layering. about some of the some of the layers there. Well, we, we're just going to okay. break, so we'll be back in a few moments, and we'll pick this conversation up after the break. Stay tuned. The future of Internet Radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Change and growth are part of natural life and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Ohm Times Experts program. With Ohm Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.omtimes.com. My name is Mira Batra, and this is How I Live United. Many families have come to America for a better life. I advocate for these families with United Way. United Way empowers them to see opportunities available. We help them get involved with their kids, schools, and network within the community. My name is Meera Batra. I help families see opportunity and succeed. I don't just wear the shirt. I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Welcome back. Richard Gold, just before the break, we were talking about the incredibly complex sound production. I mean, you've layered so many things into this. You've got brain entrainment technology. You've got um, 
you know, breathing sounds, you've got nature sounds, you've got all kinds of things. Tell us about it and, and how those layers, you know, combine together to create the resulting effect. Yeah, so our goal was to uh, contribute to creating meditative state. Because in a meditative state, when we're, you know, in the deeper brainwave states of uh, theta, alpha, and delta, uh, magic occurs. I mean, it's it's remarkable. In fact, research has even shown that uh, a 40-day program, the structure of the brain begins to change. So you mentioned brain entrainment. This is an important one. This is a, a beat that's really underneath the major theme that's being played, which is in the same cycles as especially, we go mainly to alpha and some to theta. Uh, we're actually sl slowing the, the, the electrical activity of the brain down, slowing the thought process down. And those beats themselves really are not heard by, by the listener um, in an aware way, but the, the brain is, is picking up that signal. Um, in Chinese medicine, there's the healing sounds qigong breathing, which is a, a syllable um, that can be used in, in, in med moving meditation. And we included all these. And again, these are all embedded there. Sometimes they're heard, uh, sometimes they're, they're not. We also included uh, affirmations from a psychological point of view, three affirmations uh, for each of the elements. Um, and this, again, is specifically based on traditional Chinese medicine thought and, and theory. Um, you've all used droning sounds to actually to create a, a, a rich tapestry of sound that really affects not just the, the mind but also the body. And then we have a, a theme that's played um, either solo or usually solo. Some, we have some duets in, in some of our later projects, which is highly musical. And we actually chose always to use acoustic musicians um, because the vibrational uh, effect of music played by a human being through an instrument is much stronger. It's, it's a measurable phenomenon. It's a difference between uh, looking at a, a beautiful tomato and then biting into a tomato almost. So we create all these layers. Now to the listener, it's just a, it's just a bath of beautiful sound. You don't really hear, you might hear some of this a little bit, but it really just comes as a, as a beautiful wave of sound that um, creates a measurable effect. You know, I was listening to some of it earlier, and you really can't hear anything. I mean, I was intrigued to learn that you've got, uh, you know, you've got all kinds of uh, water sound, and I couldn't identify any of them. I was just lulled into something. I'm not sure what. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. great. And um, um, one of my personal interests is because I, I've been, I used, started using sound maybe 10 years before I met Yuval, not so much in my clinical practice, to, but, but to facilitate my personal meditation practice. And um, what happened a lot to me, um, and I was using so much known as binaural sounds quite a bit, which is you have different mm -hmm. uh, frequencies going, you have to listen through headphones, you have different frequencies going into each ear. And then the, the idea is the brain will modulate that and create a third frequency, which is going to help with the left and right brain uh, integration. And um, instead of the mu over time, instead of the music facilitating meditation, it began to be an irritant. Um, and they would often have, uh, you know, nature sounds and occasionally a theme played over it, a synthesized theme. But I realized that if we're going to um, facilitate and help people learn to, learn to meditate or deepen their meditation, because quite frankly, to meditate is one of the most difficult things we try to do. It's much easier to do many of the other human activities that we have, but to truly uh, create a meditative state is, is not easy at all. I know that from personal experience. So um, that's when we came up with the feeling that we had to create something that was that could be used specifically to facilitate meditation, could be used for healing, could be used for artistic creativity, could help students study and write. Um, the only thing we recommend not using is listening to our music when you're using heavy equipment or, you know, sharp knives and tools. Um, but otherwise, it has a multiple of uh, applications, but at its root, it's to create harmony in the brain and then harmony in the mind and body. And when, uh, when we're able to create that, then we have the chance for, uh, I think, spiritual growth and personal fulfillment and uh, sort of an evolutionary impact on our on our being. Yeah, well, I, you know, many of us have heard about the Mozart effect. And, um, you know, we've been yeah. hearing about affirmations for many years and we've been hearing about binaural beats, etc. How 
complex was it to to put all this together? I mean, did you have to go, you know, back to the drawing board again and again and again to get just the right effect? Well, I find it to be a fascinating process uh, because I'm conditioned to write music for films and television. That's why I'm based in Los Angeles. And I have went to school. That's my training, to work with directors and to create music that would make the audience feel the emotions and think the thoughts that the directors wish them to feel and think in every minute of a given film. <clears throat> but here with Dr. Gold, uh, I was given information, scientific information about what is that the patient need to feel and, and, and what are the elements that need to be ev evoked through the music. Um, and I had to find a way to translate it to musical terms. I, I had to, to decide what kind of musical mode, what kind of musical instrument, what kind of theme, what kind of musical atmosphere would evoke the element of water, for example, versus the element of fire. And, uh, and for me, that was the fascinating creative part of this process. Uh, I relied a lot on research that I've done into the ancient Chinese music and how they I looked at the, the same mystery because uh, back in ancient time, uh, musicians in China uh, worked on the same challenges that I had to work on th these days. They they worked with healers and they determined musical tones and musical instruments that in, in their mind, based on their cultural perspective, would be appropriate to invoke those elements. And so I used some of the Chinese, the ancient Chinese uh, preferences in my choices of musical instruments. Uh, I used neuroscience from Western culture, from Western civilization, uh, neuroscience studies that shows what kind of musical modes impact the brain in what way. And so the result was really East meets West as far as uh, the 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 palette of of choices you know what what are the musical choices here and the result indeed is very complex because we live in an age you know sandy that we have a lot of information in front of us and uh thanks to all this information from the the mystics of the east and the, the scientists of the west uh we we can cook something very rich and very delightful and that's that is what we attempted to do you know while doing some research for the show i came across a quote about the chinese dynasties who compared music with the force of nature and they it said that they understood the power within music to be a free energy which man could use or misuse according to his own free will the rulers and their philosophers believed that in order for the citizens not to misuse mu music and to benefit from it, only the correct music could be played. What would you say is the correct music? Hmm. Uh, this is a wonderful quote, Sandy. Um, I mentioned in my book, Divine Attunement, uh, some studies that showing uh, some connection between uh, surges of aggression uh, and destruct, destructive behavior among teenagers after they were exposed to uh, heavy metal and uh, techno music. Um, it's interesting uh, uh, because uh, uh, we think about music as a healing, but music, as you pointed out, and the Chinese, the ancient Chinese knew that music can be used, like any tool, as a destructive force. So um, the music that we use is music that relaxes the mind. Uh, it creates a meditative place, and we know that in that space, meditative, reflective, relaxed space, there's a chance for the body to heal itself. So that is our choice and our understanding of how music works as a medicine. I, I would like to add that it... Go ahead. Go ahead. 
that in, in the clinical application of Chinese medicine, uh, uh, an important thing is we like to tonify the person's energy, we like to sedate the person's energy and harmonize the energy. And if, if the situation calls for uh, sedation and we end up tonifying, we're gonna create more disharmony. And the same, I believe, is because sound is a, just an, is a, another form of vibration, just like the vibration that I send through the needles I use in my clinical practice. So if I pick the wrong strategy, even if it's the right point, I can cause disruption. And if I pick the, you know, the right point, the right focus, the right intentionality, I'm going to create harmonization. And harmonization will then translate in, into greater health and well-being. And interesting how many of those words are all musical words. Mm -hmm. Tony Fine, you know, and harmonize. So, um, Dr. Gold, there's a growing body of research on sound and music therapy, and physicians are now prescribing it for heart ailments, brain dysfunction, learning disabilities, autism, depression. Yeah, it's absolutely fascinating. Now, uh, we did a, we sponsored a small research uh, pro a project a doctoral research project by a student at the Pacific College of Oriental Medicine um, that I'd like to describe quickly. Um, and I, I want you listeners to know I'm not saying that this is statistically significant because we only had 10 subjects, um, but we did, it did point to some very interesting themes. And I think one of the most inter interesting things was the four arms that we used. And I'll go back a step. So we were using a technology of, uh, that was developed by a Japanese scientist, Mystic, which is now an FDA-approved uh, research device. It's the acupuncture meridian investigating device created by uh, Dr. Kiyoshi Motoyama in, Jap in Japan back in the 70s, and he's refined it in the software over the years. And it actually makes specific measurements uh, before polarization, after polarization, at the first or last point okay. of the acupuncture meridians or pathways, or literally the wiring of the body. And so in our research, we took, did a before reading, and then we, uh, the listeners, uh, the subjects listened to our music for an hour. Um, they went through all, all six of the healing sounds. So there's five elements and six healing sounds include something known as the San Jiao or the triple warmer, which is best considered as something that integrates all the other energies. And then we did a measurement um, at the end of the hour. And they, um, we used a, a lab which had a Faraday cage, which is a, uh, it's a room that's literally uh, blocks all electromagnetic fields. Um, it's a copper line room. It's a very specific space that electrical engineers and sound engineers know about. It's not in people's homes usually. It's the equivalent of being about 300 feet below the uh, surface of the earth in a, in a cave in, in, in Italy in a way. Now, where it got very interesting is we developed four arms. Uh, the control group um, sat in silence. They didn't even hear our music. And then one group listened through headphones. Uh, one group just listened, and then one group, it was all the same subjects, and then one of the, one of the arms, we actually obstructed the hearing. We used earplugs, and then we used the earphones like you see at the airport that people on the runways use to obstruct all the loud sounds of the jets. So because a lot of times people say that we hear through every cell of our body, um, and, you know, that, that, that I thought that might or might not be true, but it'd be interesting to make some measurements about it. And absolutely – a very specific shift in the measurable energy occurred when people's hearing was blocked. So they weren't hearing music through their ears and right into their brain. It was going to the body and then through the peripheral nervous system to the central nervous system and then back out, out to the peripheral nervous system, which then would also include the points, the meridians of the body. Conscious Radio, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM.
Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. I'm Fidel Nshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family, and then, boom! Everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they recycle you to America and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. health practitioner Dr. Richard Gold about the healing power of music. Dr. Gold, we had to cut you off in midstream just before the break. Would you like to finish what you were saying? I, I think I really almost got to the end, which was in this research, we, we absolutely showed that we listen to, we are affected by sound, even if we're not hearing. It sort of harks back to something you've all said earlier in our interview with the dancers mm-hmm. that were completely deaf but danced to music. So it really uh, showed the power of the, uh, like the holistic power of sound and uh, the potential to, to, to create healing and balance in the body, measurable healing and balance in the body. Now, you currently have six healing audio albums in your Metamusic Medicine series, which offer sound remedies for sleeplessness, indigestion, bellyache, breathlessness, stress, and the blues. I have a two-minute sample from your remedy for the stress CD lined up for our listeners to experience. Before we play that, would one of you give us a little introduction to what we're going to hear? Certainly. Um, we we used, again, this set, we use traditional Chinese medicine wisdom. And so stress really affects the, the, the heart, the kidney, and the liver uh, energies of the, the wood, fire, and earth uh, quite a bit. And so we used themes that were developed for, to affect those elements um, to create a therapeutic effect. Again, we did a lot of layering here so that the effect is uh, broader and deeper into the body and the mind. Um, it's all being played by acoustic instruments that you'll hear, um, including the Chinese harp, the zither. And uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. And I encourage your listeners to just close their eyes, take a couple of deep breaths, and let the sound just wash, wash into them and through them. We'll play that sample now.
That was a two minute clip from the stress CD. You got, you, you've talked about, you know, finding the right way to, to get the effects that you want. Do you have a specific formula for each intended outcome or is every single one of them, um, you know, a kind of trial by error thing? I develop a formula for each of our projects. We, we've done three projects so far. The first project was uh, focused on Chinese medicine. It was called Ancient uh, Wisdom and Modern Sounds for Healing and Well-Being. That was a seven CD set invoking the elements of Chinese medicine. And then uh, we did another project. Uh, it's a four CD set based on Ayurvedic medicine. That's called the Sound Healing of the Doshas. And uh, there I worked with uh, Indian ragas, Indian uh, musical modes, and, and we had some chanting of Om from our Vedic tradition. And so it was a, a different formula. Um, the uh, Chinese medicine series included the sound breathing of Qigong, the healing sound, six healing sounds. So I, I used breathing sounds as part of the music. Uh, and finally, our new project, which is uh, the Sound Remedies, music, um, meta music sound uh, medicine series. Uh, these are based on the formulas that I created for the Chinese medicine. But the difference is that uh, we combined element to create specific remedies. So if in the past we, we created a sort of music formula to invoke the element of water, uh, here with the music remedies, we decided to combine elements according to Chinese medicine uh, to provide remedies for specific conditions such as sleeplessness. So we combine elements of water and wood, for example, uh, because according to Chinese medicine, that's, uh, you know, and Dr. Gold can speak more to that, how those two elements combined can uh, improve on sleep. And so on, we, we went on to deal with indigestions and, and depression and stress. And, and so these all took um, slightly different formulas that I created, um, you know, to, to provide this healing sound. And Sandy, I, um... part of our impetus, but part of our impetus to do this third project, the music medicine series, really came from the feedback we were getting from listeners. Um, that when they listened to uh, wood, they felt less irritable and less angry. Uh, parents were using our water uh, CD, and they found their children were sleeping, and then they were sleeping better. So we were uh, encouraged um, to take it the next step. And just as in Chinese medicine, when we build an herbal formula, we have a hierarchy of, of the herbs and a formula. Um, the same thing we do with sound here. So we it's not single elements with each uh, each of the remedies, but it's mixed elements that you would use the same, give you herbs to tonify the kidneys and to tonify the heart. We use the sounds for that way. So we're, again, we're, we're using sound as a healing modality and we're applying the, uh, the repeatable structure and, and wisdom that we find in Chinese medicine, which has gone through a, the crucible of empirical evidence of about uh, over almost 3,000 years now. So we had a pretty strong foundation to build upon. Um, but again, we wanted to create sounds that the modern listener could just relax into. We didn't want to have people to have, we didn't want dissonance and we didn't want um, unusual sounds that would be uh, hard for people to just, they'd be always trying to think, what am I listening to? We wanted the music to just flow into a person just like uh, a stream that you're sitting next to and you, the water passes by and the leaves are rustling above you and you hear a bird chirping in a tree and you might smell the flowers in a, in a spring field. So we wanted to create this full ambience of sound uh, that people would be taking in even thus not with necessarily conscious thought. Now, I, I've read that um, music therapy can enhance cognitive recovery and mood after um, middle cerebral arteries and stroke, etc. And sound meditation is actually being investigated in oncological rehabilitation. Do you see yourselves creating prescription-only soundtracks? 
Well, we'd certainly like to have the opportunity to see our music uh, much more broadly used in an integrative uh, way. Um, I mean, just as a, for instance, if God forbid someone is in, in an oncologist's office because they're being treated for, for, for cancer, from the moment they step into their office, if the ambience of the office, especially the sound, I mean, the sound and the smell and the, you know, all the different senses um, you want to invoke, but the sound's going to be one that's going to be, um, you can't close your eyes to it. And uh, so we want, we'd really like to have the opportunity to work with physicians and, and work with medical groups to help create an integrative environment that supports healing. Now, we're not an either or type of people. We, you know, we absolutely understand and embrace and honor the tremendous strides that uh, Western medicine's making in, in the treatment of uh, debilitating ter and diseases. Um, but there's much more, there's a whole person. It's that, you know, the person has cancer. It's not just the cancer that you're dealing with. And the more integrative we can do and more honoring of the whole person, um, I think we can create a tremendous uh, benefit. Um, you, you shouldn't want to go into an office and ask the, the person at the desk to please turn the music off because it's just inappropriate to the healing environment that you would hope you hope would be ha you'd be having. And this applies to staff listening. too. You're listening to what is going on. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, and my guests are award-winning composer Yuval Ron and integrative health practitioner Dr. Richard Gold, who combined their expertise to create a powerful series of sound remedies for healing and well-being. We'll be back in a few moments after the break. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Spiritual. Metaphysical. Green living. Psychic. Alternative healing. Life coaching. Do any of these or similar terms apply to your business or cause? If so, you are in a niche market with a very specific audience. ConsciousGate PR is the world's leading conscious public relations agency. With a global reach of over 4 million and growing, we offer comprehensive media campaigns to our targeted market. Learn more at ConsciousGatePR.com. Conscious marketing for conscious minds. Hi everyone, this is Shea Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ag Council. Welcome back. Eva, Ron, you spoke earlier about the two other series you've produced, the um, one for Ayurvedic medicine, the Dosha Music Series, and the traditional Chinese medicine, Six Healing Sounds CD. On the page on your website featuring those, I was really interested to hear that a less known aspect of the chanting of the sacred mantra of Om is that it can influence the three doshas. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. In the research uh, that I've done with our Vedic masters in preparation for composing the music, I was also very surprised to find out uh, that Om... Uh, has three different versions, and it's being used by our Vedic healers. There's, um, you see, the, the the Om sound is really Aum, um, and then there's a silent. So there's really four parts to it. There's the A ah sound, there's the U sound, and the M sound, and each one of them is a different sound and different vibration that resonates differently in the body. And then you have a silent moment to breathe in, 
which is a sacred moment, and it's the mysterious moment. And the way our Vedic doctors use this is they associate the first vibration, the sound of ah, as invoking and balancing the dosha called the vata, which is more airy um, and, and intangible, uh, uh, ether kind of uh, element. Um, and then you have the u in the middle of om, the u sound, invoke the more fiery dosha called um, uh, pita. Pita. With a dub, double T, pita. And then the third dosha is kapha, and that is is a grounding, earthy, like a muddy, wet earth, and that is associated with the closing sound of Om, which is the the M, the M. And so uh, we featured that uh, on on the recordings of the Ayurvedic music series, and we invited uh, the great Kirtan singer Jay Uttal, uh to sing those chanting, and we instructed him with the information that we received from our Vedic masters. And so he chanted three different kinds of alms. Um, and he himself testified in the recording studio how different it was for him to to lengthen one part of the om and not another, how it affected him. Uh, it was very interesting. Yeah, I would like to Maybe add, because ago. having grown up here, here, here in America, that, that I always saw growing up and when I studied academically, OM is O-M. But if you see OM as AUM, A-U-M, uh, uh, that really is when you can break it into these three syllables. And um, it was a revelation to us, even though we'd both been around yoga for, for many years, to have this uh, specific differentiation. And the way it works is so, so Vata, it's a long A, uh, a short U, uh, and a short M. Pitta, it's a short A, uh, a long U, and then a short M. And then the Kapha, it's a short A, uh, a short U, uh, and then a long M sound. And these chants, by breaking this, the, the sacred ohm into these three parts, um, it really affects the vibration. It was a beautiful revelation, and, and we loved having Jai Utah working with us, and I think it really enriches the, the sound. Many years ago, I came across the work of chiropractor and sound researcher Jeffrey Thompson, um, who was working uh, with, you know, creating tables and music to go with them. Now, <clears throat> I read that he'd done uh, some testing with sound chairs in an oncology clinic, and he said that people were undergoing chemotherapy with no pain, um, that the sound was actually helping, you know, um, basically, you know, completely tune out the, the uh, pain gateways and that they were able to have their um, chemotherapy in less time because it was um, the sound tracks were designed to distress the body and open the nervous system and increase chemotherapy uptake, chemotherapy uptake in tissues. How far do you think this could go? Well, Sandy, I, 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 I can tell you that uh, the sky, I mean, I think the sky is the limit. Because I, uh, let me tell you about one study that I've heard in recent uh, months uh, about people who are actually developing a way to use sound to destroy cancer cell. And the concept is, you know about the case where soprano singers may sing a note, a high note, and suddenly all all the glasses in the room would shatter. We know of that yeah. phenomenon. Yeah. Mm. And and it's a unique vibration. It's high pitch, and it requires a certain f amount of force. So if if the singer would sing softly, and not the right note that 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 specific glass is sensitive to, the glass will not shatter. It needs to be the combination of the right frequency and the right volume. And so. Researchers now working with doctors and musicians together trying to identify for specific kinds of tumors what frequency of sound would cause the cancer cell to explode and, and disappear and, and, and experimenting with different frequencies, different uh, volumes. And they found 
some success, uh, especially when combining two different frequencies. In some cases, they, they need to produce two different kinds of frequencies and specific volume, and, and it shows that certain tumors uh, exploded and disappeared. Uh, so that, that's incredible, incredible um, uh, uh, direction. So the, the vision is that you, you know, people may have cancer. God forbid they, they would go, but they would go to the doctor, and the doctor would diagnose what kind of cancer, what tumor it is. The doctor would have a chart with specific sound frequencies that work on that specific cancer, and, and the patient simply would sit with headphones or would lay down in, in something like the MRI tunnel, you know, MRI machine, where you just lay down, you subject your body to sound that in many cases is beyond our, our hearing range. So you would, you would not even hear the sound vibration, and that sound vibration will, will heal your body. Uh, all, all we will need is headphones, basically. So that, that's it, and no side effects, no chemotherapy, n none n whatsoever. And that is where medicine is going. That is the frontier, is, is combining sound and science, combining musicians, composers, and, and doctors and, and scientists. And, and that is what I'm very interested in and I've been active in since 1990, when I collaborated with Robert Monroe of the Monroe Institute in Virginia, who yes. developed yes. the Hemisync sound by Neural Beats, mm -hmm. uh, I composed music for him in 1990, trying to increase the impact of the Hemisync sound. Uh, and my work with uh, Dr. Gold, I'm very fortunate to to meet Dr. Gold and work together with him because I feel that our collaboration now. Uh, we've done more than just one project. We, we've done three series, and we keep researching. We keep trying things. We're interested in scientists testing our music. As a matter of fact, um, uh, a month ago I was in Boston in a, in a meeting with uh, one of the leading neuroscientists, Dr. A anu uh, Patel from Tufts University, who wrote the book about how language and music affect the brain. And uh, and we talked about uh, using our music for study on children um, in in Tufts University, uh, and so uh, we we are always interested in in working with scientists and, and and trying to find what works best and to keep fine tuning our sound medicine uh, products so so people can get safe. A remedy. I, I, I personally know so many people that suffer from insomnia and they try so many things and nothing works. They, they try natural medicine, they try, they try everything. And it, it, people are miserable. They, 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 their life are, are, are ruined because of the fact that they cannot sleep. And, and so I wish we could help these kind of people uh, with a very simple device that provide them with sound. Uh, that is not invasive, that is not painful, that is not doesn't have side effects, and something that can actually help. Well, I often sleep to um, some of the uh, music from Monroe. I find it really relaxing. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, I've been using it for a long time, and in fact, I um, use it with my grandchildren too. Helps them. Fabulous. Um, so your... your um, uh, medicine music is is about ten minutes long. Is that enough for people to feel the effects? You know, other um, CDs seem to be much longer than that. Yes. Well, um, we we actually encourage. You can feel the effect. We actually encourage people to loop our to loop those ten minute tracks ah. or to combine a few. That's um, the whole the whole. We didn't even put these into hard CDs because we found that. Uh, Everybody wants to download music mostly now, so it's, and so that was the best way to deliver it at, a, at a, really a fraction of the cost of a CD. But we do want people to loop our music. Um, that's definitely – and now we put that in our, uh, our literature or on our online liner notes and things like that. But what, what, what research has shown is 40 minutes is sort of a magic duration and the question comes, is that two, two 20 minute sittings or is it four 10 minute sittings? Um, my personal feeling is that a, four, a sustained 40 minute, I don't have data on this, 
but sustained 40 minute meditation, I think will be optimal. And th this is when we really start to see structural changes happen in the brain. And when those happen, it's gonna, it's gonna uh, permeate throughout the whole system, that down to the cellular level. But certainly, even sometimes a 10 minute break in the action, if you're writing a book or working in a stressful environment, if you can close your eyes for 10 minutes, touch into a quiet space of no thought, uh, abdominal breathing, there's going to be benefits. But I believe that the, the real measurable benefit that's going to be medically important will take longer. Well, I think you guys are working in one of the most exciting fields of all. We have to leave it there, I'm afraid. It's been a pleasure to talk with you tonight. I'm sorry about all the um, you know, complications that we had during the show, but I wish you the best of luck. And please keep us posted on new innovations. You've been listening to Thank what you is so going much on. For your support, if you want Sandy. to know... Oh, you're welcome. If you want more information about Yuval Ron and Richard Gold's Meta Mindfulness Music and to hear samples, visit Meta, with two Ts, mindfulnessmusic.com. You've been listening to What Is Going On. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, and next week I'll be talking to author Kate Montana about her new book, Ego, Evolution, and Making Sense 